is full of history. Captain Cook called here in 1770 and the two museums are fascinating. There's a crocodile shop here as well as a bank, supermarkets, hotels and motels etc. Some of the big changes old timers will notice include stretches of tar, there's 50 k's before Isabella Falls that used to be rough dirt and now it's bitumen and a lot of the rocky creek crossings are now made very easy by concrete causeways. It means you don't have to start rock road building every time you want to cross a creek. A lot of the corrugated road sections that we used to fear terribly at the Cape have now been graded and kept in good condition so a lot of the driving can be done at highway speeds a lot easier than it used to be. But don't be deceived by the road conditions. Uh, if you get a shower of rain, the place is still a skating rink and many a vehicle has come to grief at the Cape. Musgrave is a welcome sight and a chance to wash the bull dust down with a cool drink. There's good food and all fueled except LPG. The last stop for LPG is Mariba, by the way. This used to be a homestead on the old Overland Telegraph track. And there's some interesting history to read about the place. Next stop is Cohen, 100 k's up the road. Cohen has a sealed main road, there's a post office, supermarket and you can get mechanical repairs here as well as fuel. An early start the next day on the dusty red dirt road to Archer River Roadhouse. It's around 70 k's north of Cohen. It has all fuels, hot showers and a campground, cold beer and drinks. The famous Archer Burger. And you can also phone home if you want. On the road north you cross a concrete causeway and when it's dry the riverbed makes a good campsite. Those of us who went to the Cape years ago can't believe this new bridge at the Wenlock River. A good 20k run down the main road brings us to the main Wenlock River crossing. If it's not too crowded, this is a nice camping spot besides being a great swimming hole. Up on top of the northern bank is the old Morton Telegraph Station. And there's still a phone here. Uh, there are times we've camped on the edge of the river for a couple of days waiting for the level to drop. And sometimes when it didn't drop, we'd resort to this handmade punt. And one vehicle at a time would be put on the punt. And those of us who were brave or stupid would push it across the river to the other side great adventure but it wouldn't work with today's tourist crowds. Bramwell Station is a great place to camp and they now have fuel right at the entrance to the famous telegraph track. Before long, there's a long creek crossing at Scrubby Creek, but it's fairly easy. Walk the crossing first. Just down the road is the Elliott Falls turnoff. Magic swimming and camping here. And it's only a short walk to Twin Falls and Indian Head Falls. Crossing this creek shouldn't be a problem, although the old track is bumpy. And being clay, it gets slippery when it's wet. There's an easier track left up the creek a bit. The telegraph track gets very little maintenance other than hand repairs done by travellers like you and so it's a lot slower and rougher than the main road but the highlight of the trip for us. 
There have been some rumours that the Telegraph track has been closed, but this is not the case. You need caution on all the river crossings because quite often there's a large boulder being disturbed by a previous vehicle and you don't want to smash a hole in your sump or in your gearbox. Further on there's a left turn to the bypass road and the ferry. At the Jardine Ferry it's easy to top up fuel so you don't have any worries for the rest of the trip. The price of the ferry crossing in late 2010 was $88 and if that seems a lot of money that includes all your camping for all the time you spend up in the tip. So it goes to the local community um, who maintain the barge. The top end is getting much closer. Back on the road to Bamaga, and a grim reminder how close this part of Australia was to the action in World War II. Aircraft wrecks abound up here. This was an old C-47, or DC-3, which didn't make it back to the landing field. It's fenced off now and is well worth looking at as a war relic. A little further on is Seisha, and you're almost at the end of your journey to the top of Australia. Seisha Wharf is famous as a fishing spot, so if you haven't got a boat, you can still catch a beautiful fish like this queen fish, or an even bigger fish like this massive trevally. get some idea of the size of this trevally watching old mate try to carry it across the car park to his car. That's a big fish. From Seja to the tip is a lovely drive through mainly rainforest conditions and you used to have to trudge along a lengthy boardwalk to get to the rocky tip of Australia. But now you can drive right to the end of the forest. And while you're there, you'll see what's left of what was a beautiful tourist resort at Pajinka, now sadly fallen into ruins and inhabited mainly by brown snakes and the occasional pig. The road to the tip is well maintained. By the way, the sign by the boardwalk about crocodiles means exactly what it says. This is it, the tip of Cape York, the northernmost point on the mainland of our great continent.